Hello everyone, it's Father Bender uh, back here with the weekly video. Um, this week's uh, video is going to just be a little bit instructional um, and explanatory about some things that are happening in the church. Um, um, some things that have appeared over, um, you know, the past maybe couple of weeks, I think maybe longer. Um, there's two cards that appear in the pews. This um, this first card is kind of a welcoming uh, family card. So like if we have visitors with families and they want to know like how to do things and um, it just kind of helps them understand um, the family's inter interaction in the mass and in our in our greater family. Um, it also um, helps them see our mission and um, kind of advertises little saints which is a program we have, you know, here, a uh, ministry we have here to parish. And so kind of putting that in the pews, just a way of connecting with families and new, especially new families may not know exactly how things work in the, in the mass and in the church. And so it's kind of a nice connection piece for them. Um, the other thing is a connect card and this and a serve card. So it's just kind of a, a way for maybe new parishioners or, um, current prisoners to um, communicate with us ways they would like to connect in the parish or ways they would be willing to serve in the parish. Um, I know I've said this in the past and I'll continue to say it. Our volunteer base is a bit low and we could use um, more servers in a lot of our different ministries, um, especially the ones um, at the Mass. And so you just fill out this card and uh, Elaine, our um, director of ministries and volunteers, will get in touch with you and help you connect or serve in whatever way you feel you can. Um, it's also a good way to update your information. You know, if you've changed address or phone number or you want to give us email addresses, you can fill one of these cards out and you can just pop it in the collection basket or throw it in the baskets on the way out um, as you're leaving and we'll get them. So that's you know, a kind of another thing that's appeared in the the pews over the past few weeks. Um, another thing that's going to appear at the beginning of Advent, which you know is our liturgical year, is our new missalette. Um, we are using, going to be using um, for the um, liturgical year coming up, a Source and Summit a Missal. Um, it's uh, new to our parish. We haven't, we kind of used uh, breaking bread in the past, and then this past year we used um, St. Joseph's Missal kind of as a fill-in until um, we decided what we were going to do about a missal. And so we, we've kind of landed on this one. David and I kind of collaborated and found that we both like this one very much um, for a number of reasons. Um, one of the reasons I like it is that um, it introduces the antiphons and the responsorial psalm for daily Mass. So that even if you don't have a Magnificat or a We Are a Word Among Us uh, book, you can still follow along at daily mass um, with the antiphons that we say at the entrance and at communion, and as well as it has the responsorial psalm uh, for the day in it. And so that that is very helpful with the new uh, missile. Um, another thing the new missile does that our old, um, the breaking bread or the one we use currently, um, d uh, does um, introduce um, our antiphons. So um, the antiphons of the church are an old tradition um, that go back and back. Um, and we we use them at daily mass probably more regularly than we do at Sunday, um, just because we didn't have in the past the resource to use them on Sundays. But um, if you've noticed um, um, at some of the masses, the cantor, um, we'll chant the antiphon at the appropriate time, and then the hymn begins. So um, antiphons um, can occur at the same place as hymns do. So entrance, um, offertory, and communion, there are antiphons for. And those antiphons go uh, back and back and back, and have been a tradition for a great long time. And so this book reintroduces the antiphons along with the music uh, for them. And so... Um, David, as we introduce this missal um, to the parish, we will probably start giving, um, among the many other musical options we have for Sunday, 
we will um, more than likely, uh, we will be introducing the, um, using the antiphons at mass here and there to kind of uh, change things up and mix things up um, in our variety of how um, we do music. I'm very excited about that. David is as well. I love um, the use of singing antiphons at mass. Um, we did it in seminary and it was really beautiful. And I've been at other parishes that have used it and it is very beautiful and very, you know, very Catholic and very traditional. And I love doing uh, things that are very Catholic. And so um, it's called Source and Summit Missile and it will be entering our pews. Um, you will see it the Sunday after Thanksgiving will be the, that's the first Sunday of the new liturgical year. And so we will be using it. Another great resource in the Source and Summit is in the back. There are really great um, kind of prayers and things you can say after Mass um, to kind of end uh, the Mass. Or, you know, even at communion time when you're reflecting, there's really great um, prayers in the in the back of, of the Missal. So that's another kind of nice um, feature of the Missal, um, besides a great selection of music as well. Um, different uh, varieties. It, I mean, again, it works just like the missile. It has the readings for Sunday to follow along and um, um, other things as well. So very good. On the back, even on the back is the prayer to St. Michael, which I like very much, an act of contrition and an act of spiritual communion, you know, all on the back of the of the missile. So a great missile. Really excited about using it um, and getting it worked into our liturgy um, at the church. And then finally, the last um, thing I really I uh, want to talk about, again, we, we have been, you know, um, Father loves being Catholic. And so there are there are things in our liturgy that are very Catholic and are uniquely Catholic. One of them is the use of Latin. And we've been kind of expanding our um, range of that in the Mass since I got here. We, you know, did the Agnus Dei in Advent and Lent and then uh, Lamb of God in Latin. And then we did the Holy, 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 the Sanctus. In Latin, we added that a couple years ago. Um, and then this, so this Advent, we're going to add another Mass part in Latin, um, just so that we can kind of, the goal is over a number of years that we'll have all the Mass parts um, learned for the Mass the, in Latin, um, because that is something that is beautifully, uniquely uh, Catholic, and we need to embrace that uniqueness, make it attractive to others, um, to say, hey, this is, you know, kind of cool, um, and it's something only I can get here in the Catholic Church, and so um, we're going to introduce the Mysterium Fidei, which is the mystery of faith. We profess, you know, we proclaim our, your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. So we say that in English, but there's a Latin um, version of that that's really beautiful, um, easy to learn. It's only a couple sentences, and it's called the Mysterium Fidei. So David O'Donnell's going to kind of um, take the lead on introducing that to the parish. Um, one of the best ways, um, honestly, is YouTube. So he makes a recording of the mass part and posts it on YouTube. And you can just go there and practice it. That's how I learned um, the new English mass parts that we learned. He posted those. Those are posted on YouTube as well. And I used to sit here and play them while I was working so I could practice them and learn them. Um, so it's one of the best ways. So think of the next week or so, a few days, he'll be posting a video of the Mysterium Fidei um, uh, mass part so that we can learn it and so that that Sunday after um, Thanksgiving, the first Sunday of Advent, we'll start um, we'll start adding that to our mass part. So starting the first Sunday of Advent, we'll do the Lamb of God, the Holy, 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 and the Mystery of Faith, all in Latin. And so those cards will be in their pews like they were in the past to follow along and the cantor and organist will help uh, lead us in that to make at least Advent and, and Lent you know, the somber um, kind of um, internal uh, uh, time that it should be, you know, a reflective time, uh, a time of repentance, a time to um, focus on things that we need to, you know, fix about ourselves or correct about ourselves because of sin and, and this broken world. And so hopefully though, um, those mass parts during Advent and Lent will help us um, kind of deepen our faith and rooted in our Catholicness. I don't think that's the word, Catholicness. But um, but anyway, so a lot of great things happening in the liturgy with the Source and Summit coming with these great cards in the pews um, about family and connecting and serving and 
So I'm um, very excited about all of that. Um, just a you know better way for our family to worship together, pray together, gather together. That very first um, part of our uh, purpose as a church to gather and to thank God for all that he's given us and that all that he does for us and to receive the Eucharist, to get the strength we need to get through our week, um, no matter what uh, troubles or joys come our way. We know Christ is with us to give us the strength and the Holy Spirit continues to be with us and and work in us to, to make us stronger Catholics, better Christians, saints that we need to be to get to heaven because that's our ultimate goal. So very excited, very excited about Advent, one of my favorite times of the year. And so I'm looking forward to seeing my family at church and um, during this season um, and have a great week. I love it. I love you all. You know that so much. And I hope um, you have a great rest of the week and I hope to see you on the weekend. Love you all. Bye-bye.